Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like when I have an allergic reaction from my own sweat under a microscope. So just in case you're new here, I'll just explain briefly. I have allergic reactions when my skin comes into contact with water, and that can be any type or any kind of water, including my own sweat, including rain, bath water, humidity in the air, like literally any type of water comes into contact with my skin, I have an allergic reaction. And it's not a joke, it is a real thing. It's called acrogenic pruritus. And if you guys haven't heard me talk about it before, then make sure that you head over to my allergic to water playlist so that you understand fully before you proceed with this video. Just because I've got loads and loads of videos already covering like the basics of the condition and I feel like those will better answer your questions than this one. Because I feel like this one is if you're an OG near viewer and you know the deal and you kind of just wanna come along with me and do the experiments with me and see what happens. So I did the video before you guys might have already seen it you guys might not have but either way I'll put it up on the screen for you now so that you know which one I'm talking about now in that video I looked at my skin under a microscope so I had a look at my skin before I had a bath to see what it looked like under microscope and then I went and had a bath and then I came and filmed my skin after I had the bath and when I was already having the allergic reaction and that video popped off when I say it did really well I mean last time I checked it was on like 1.4 million views and the idea that that many people care about me and my little skin condition is crazy so I felt like this would be a really fun sequel to that video you know I'm not sure if it's going to be as interesting as that one was but we will see so as you guys can imagine being allergic to your own sweat is something you don't have a great deal of control over how much you sweat so the amount of times that being allergic to my sweat can catch me off guard is pretty insane actually so you can start sweating in your sleep where obviously you're not conscious so i specifically can't alert myself when i start sweating because i'm asleep I start sweating when I'm cooking because it's hot and sometimes it can be quite stressful. Next time you cook a meal, let me know if you manage to go from start to finish without breaking a sweat. Obviously, I can't avoid sweating when it's the summer, when it's really hot during summer weather. Like, I can't just turn my sweat glands off during that time. So, summer is fairly hellish for me i'm not gonna lie obviously you sweat when you exercise which i don't find affects me too much anymore because i just don't do it no sir not me i don't exercise since i became allergic to my own sweat because i do things like go for walks and stuff but i take things very slow when it comes to exercising so i tend to try and avoid things that are going to make me sweat heavily and when else do you sweat in life like you know just in your day to day what else makes you sweat Oh yeah, sex. Not gonna lie, that's my least favorite one. <laughs> and in an ideal world, I would have air conditioning all around my house. Like I would love to live in a house that was fully air conditioned so that I could potentially try and regulate or control my own temperature when these external factors like the weather or doing things that require you getting hot come into the mix. Like obviously if I had air conditioning, then that would work to like counteract extra heat and I like to think that I wouldn't suffer so much but I live in the UK and traditionally our buildings are mainly focused on keeping heat in because we live in such a cold country as opposed to being equipped to deal with hot weather and heat so that is something that I'm gonna have to save my YouTube coins up for when I can eventually move out of my parents house I'm gonna go over my skin with the microscope and we're gonna have a look at what it looks like before I start to sweat and before I start to have an allergic reaction so I've also got another camera set up so you've got a better view of my leg and the area of my leg that I am going over with the microscope and then I've also got the microscope camera as well so I'm just gonna grab my microscope the bit that I'm gonna look at is like my shin area on my left leg um, I feel like that's just an easy place to start and it's probably quite similar to where we started last time as well so fyi i have actually shaved my legs but from this microscope you would not think so that looks like my moisturizer can you see like the kind of like greasy residue in between the little crevices of my skin it's really interesting it always looks so sore around where the hair follicles are coming out of my skin and can you see that? That's an ingrown hair from where I have curly afro hair naturally. I'm so prone to ingrown hairs. So you can see I get loads of these under the skin, which is so horrible. 
but yeah I do feel like this is fairly normal for my skin like it's not actually looking too bad let me zoom out a tiny bit and see if I can get a different view this is much shakier though this footage because I have to hold it by hand but it doesn't look too different does it it just kind of looks more pimply slightly more sore so now what I'm gonna do the original plan for this was that I was gonna go outside and I was gonna sunbathe and basically watch how my skin reacted from natural sunlight and natural like heat from the Sun because we had a really really good week of weather last week it was so hot but naturally I was very ill last week I had a lot of allergic reactions and I just didn't get myself together in time to get myself outside to film this video and of course this week is thunderstorms like it's literally raining and now I can't film outside so I've had to improvise and film inside my bedroom so so basically I've got to go and now shut all the windows and I'm going to turn on a heater as well um I'm hoping that in combination with the heat coming from my lights will be enough to make me start sweating and then I'm going to film basically what happens once I start sweating and what happens with my skin so because my hand is a bit clammy I'm going to place it on my right thigh just to kind of speed up the process and just show what happens the palm of my hands are actually the least sensitive part of my entire body so it's not a good place to show you an allergic reaction because I very rarely do have the allergic reactions on my hands right so I'm still keeping an eye on the area that's near the radiator but in a moment I'm also going to check under my hand as well I can potentially see the first signs of sweat but at the same time these little kind of like glistening spots I did see these to begin with so it could be some sort of moisturizer but we'll see in a minute because we'll see what it looks like in comparison to my right leg okay so I'm gonna have a look under this hand now and see what's going on so there's definitely some oh yeah okay so that's definitely broken the sweat now from where I've had my hand on my leg it's got these little red areas here where it's starting to react from the contact with sweat so I'm gonna leave that for another five minutes and see what happens because it usually takes about 10 minutes or so to fully start an allergic reaction so I want to give it a proper chance but obviously this is kind of like a forced allergic reaction it's not starting naturally so it's a bit difficult to be sure like how long it's gonna take and stuff until we can actually see some differences out of curiosity guys, have any of you had an allergic reaction before and if you have, what was it to? How long did it last? What did it feel like? I'm intrigued to know if allergic reactions feel really wildly different from each other or if they're kind of similar. So let me know down below if you have any allergies or if you have had an allergic reaction to something and what it was like. So underneath my right hand now, where I've had my hand pressed against my thigh for about 10 minutes, it is now starting to itch under that point. So that's because it's kind of like accelerated the amount of sweat that's gathered on my skin. And I can definitely feel it itching now. Like it's really not feeling the best, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so now I'm taking the microscope and I'm gonna hone in on the allergic reaction underneath my hand and just around the area of my hand. So this is what it does. So if say I were to spill a glass of water like on my leg, it would start in that spot and then it would spread to the rest of the area. So although I haven't like triggered the entire allergic reaction by sweating all over, I'm sure that it will end up that way because that is just how my skin works. It doesn't feel great, it's burning under my hand, but I'm just gonna take away my hand and have a look with the microscope where it's itching, just to see if we can see anything. So, see it's still not really showing much, like obviously after I'd had the bath in the previous video, I felt like there was actually something to show for the fact that I was in pain because it, you know, you could see that my skin was pretty beaten up and stuff, but I feel like with this one, it's not really giving away much compared to how it feels and compared to the fact that it literally feels like I've got pins all over that area, like sharp needle pins 
sort of sticking into my skin in that area, what it looks like is really surprising. And my skin over here doesn't look ideal, does it? See, now this area here is pretty sore. See, the fact that we can't see much, I wonder if it's because when I have a bath, my allergic reactions from a bath, like pure sitting in water, is really, really bad. Like the allergic reactions from a bath are probably the highest level of allergic reaction that I have. Like that is the worst allergic reaction I can get. When I have an allergic reaction from getting sweaty, it's a different kind of pain. Like it's not quite as high in intensity. It's still really itchy and it still burns, but it's more of like a fiery feeling. It feels like I'm burning from underneath the skin as opposed to it being on the outside of the skin. So when I think of it that way, it's not actually that surprising that I can't see that much. The pain definitely feels more under the skin when I have an allergic reaction from sweat. But at the same time, it's also, I find that people like to see things for their own eyes before they believe them. And one of the hardest things about having the condition that I have is the fact that where it's so rare and where it's so unstudied, I do feel like I have to look for these little signs to see you know, what happens differently from one reaction to the next because I don't feel like I have anyone with me doing that with me and investigating that for me. So it's really interesting, but at the same time, sorry, I just got really sharp pain. But yeah, at the same time, it's also kind of expected and in line with what my skin condition does. I wish there was some sort of like pain meter that I could show you so you could actually see or know what it feels like to actually be in my body and feel the pain. So I've cut the heat now. The allergic reaction is getting worse. It's starting to burn and prickle more than it was, sorry, I'm starting to lose like my train of thought because it just hurts and that's what I'm thinking about rather than how I'm gonna end this video. But basically that is how my skin changes after I have an allergic reaction from my own sweat. Visibly, it's not that amazing, but in terms of how it feels and in terms of the reality of the situation, the fact that my own sweat that comes from my own body, from my own skin can be a trigger for my skin like that is almost as confusing as the water on its own but i hope you guys found this video interesting i'm gonna wrap this video up nice and quickly because my leg is burning as always angels please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my content if you like learning about my skin condition make sure that you're hitting the subscribe button so that you're not missing any of my future videos and if you're on social media then make sure that you head over to instagram twitter snapchat make sure that you follow me on all of my social media accounts and as always angels i will see you in the next video